Oh god! That was For a king, no rhythm to speak. I wish to God you could sing. Find a hill in the Troy in a real world style. Could start a religion with a launch code smile. And I want along with a rock and roll soul. Here's what I need. Get those life vests zipped and clipped, strap down those rods, and put away those tackle bags because we are going fishing. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Bastard Anglers Podcast. I'm your host, Keith Nicewander, and today we have the winner of the 2021 Bastard Anglers Podcast Angler of the Year joining us. What is the Bastard Anglers Podcast Angler of the Year, you might ask? Well, needless to say, we are big fans of the professional fishing tours. And there are actually quite a few of these tours out there. Each one of these tours is going to crown their own Angler of the Year at the end of the season. As fanatics, we feel that there needs to be unification. And that's what the Bass to Anglers podcast Angler of the Year award is all about. Unification of the sport. A single Angler of the Year to reign for the entire season. This past season, we have watched a dozen or so tours consisting of something like 63 different events. We took the results of all those events, and we have determined our winner. Which tours did we use? Well, it starts with the biggest tours. The biggest tours in the land. Major League Fishing's Bass Pro Tour and the BASS Elite Series. Now, all of those pros that compete on those events also compete in other events. And so we have combed through the records tirelessly to find out which of these other tours these top pros in the country actually fish. And here's what we've come up with. The Bass to Anglers podcast Angler of the Year title is a result of accumulated points from Major League Fishing's Bass Pro Tour, the BASS Elite Series, Major League Fishing's Pro Circuit, all the BASS Opens, all of the Toyota Series events, some Juan Bass events from out west, and the Wild West Bass Tour also out in the west. Again, going through all those events, there were something like 63 of them. That is how we reached our total for the season, for 2021 season. The 2021 Bass to Anglers Podcast Angler of the Year is Dakota Ebert, and he will join us later in this podcast. But first, if you like the content that we produce on this channel, please subscribe to our channel. Please drop us a comment, smash that like button. As you know, we are the Western representatives for Ducket Fishing. You know these guys, the strongest pro staff in all of professional fishing. We're adding new dealerships in the West just about every week. If you're in Ventura, Los Angeles County, Orange County, San Diego, Inland Empire, Lake Havasu, Sacramento, we've got a store to showcase these products so you can take a look at them. If you have a tackle shop or know of one that we should call on, send us a DM on Instagram or go to our website BassTourAnglers.com and drop us an email. We would love to tell you about the Ducket Fishing lineup of pro-driven rods, 
reels, and baits. Change. It's inevitable. To improve, you must adapt. The sport is evolving. A paradigm shift is a fundamental change of basic concepts. Don't get left behind. Introducing Paradigm. Paradigm Reels by Ducket Fishing. Pro-driven. Our guest today is the hardest working tour pro in the country. He finished 10th overall in the Major League Fishing Pro Circuit Angler of the Year standings in 2021. He is also qualified to fish the 2022 Bass Pro Tour. That's right, Bass Pro Tour, the big one. He made it. And he is the 2021 Bass Tour Anglers Podcast Angler of the Year. Welcome back to the show, Dakota Eber. Thanks for being with us. Hey, man, thanks for having me, and uh, glad I could be here. You know, it's just really thankful for a good year, and, uh, you know, just just been uh, getting ready for the new year coming up. Absolutely. Before we go any further, let's let's go ahead and do the official presentation. I'm sorry, we don't have a check for you. Maybe someday, but uh, we've got this plaque, this Master Anglers Podcast Anger of the Year plaque that we are happy to award to you. Please accept that for us. You bet. From us, I should I'm say. Right here. All hey, right. hey, hey. <laughs> you think we fooled anybody with that with that exchange? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> what an amazing season. Uh I don't know of anyone who fished more events than you did. Uh you are you are on the road all the time. I mean, really, I don't know if you I don't know if you had a home residence last year or not. Uh, congratulations on qualifying for the, for the Bass Pro Tour. Uh, what are you going to be doing this next year? Man, uh, so I appreciate all that. Uh, you know, uh, my parents instilled in me, you know, a hard work ethic when I was a kid. And, uh, you know, I, I translate that even to fishing, you know, and, and uh, people look at it as a hobby. But to me, I look at it as a job. And if you want to be good at something, you got to work hard at it. That's just that's just all there is to that, man. That's the reason why I'm behind fishing all those events and all that. And and it's paid off for me just because of the time on the water and everything. So with that being said, um, you know, I'll be fishing the Bass Pro Tour next year. And I'm also fishing the Pro Circuit again as well. And that's why I'm still in my bibs. And I look like the Michelin Man because it's cold in Texas and uh, we don't like the cold. I mean, I do, but we're just not really good with it. So we wear a lot of clothes. And I just got in from running my boat. Uh, just fine in a few things because we kicked that off here uh, this coming up week That's at right. Ray Room. And right. um, it's it's really nice to to have these opener events here on your home lake because, you know, I just bought this place here, uh, fortunately, um, in the off season. And um, I finally have a home now because I was homeless before. <laughs> that, but, that, uh, that looks like a legitimate – pro workshop there behind you is that is that is that uh like the man, green garage that, that's all it is man it's just uh just old deer deer hunting cave uh <laughs> or i'm covering my camera yeah it's just the old deer cave with the bass boat and a bunch of tackle and a, a washer and a dryer man in a be bedroom and a bathroom i'm a single guy i'm never here this is all i need you know it's just kind of perfect man and, and uh, i was really fortunate to be able to buy this place and extremely thankful for that and uh got a little place to call home and it, it's really been a, um, a big deal for me because the last several years I've been uh, fortunate enough to have a place to stay with some friends, you know, in the off season here at Rayburn, but um, it's been hard to rig boats and uh, organize tackle and do all that stuff whenever you're living in somebody's spare bedroom, you know, and, and uh, it's, uh, it's been a heck of a lot easier, you know, being here, and what I call my home and, and being able to work on all my stuff. And I think it's really going to pay off for me this year because I've really been able to fine tune my equipment and my boat. And I, I, I really feel more prepared this year than I ever have before uh, going into a season now, you know, it's fishing and there's no telling what's going to happen, but um, I really have done. Uh, I just feel like I'm ahead of the game a lot more this year than what I ever have been before, because usually I'm still scrambling around trying to get, you know, boats rigged and everything else and and i've actually got 100 hours in this boat already um i uh i started fishing in it in october right before the toyota series championship 
and uh, I've got over 100 hours on it already. So we've kind of been through the break-in the break-in period. We've lined out all the bugs and everything, and and I'm ready to go fishing now. So pretty excited to get things started off here at Rayburn next week. You know, you know, I I think for a pro fisherman, you know, you've made it when you have a high ceiling work workshop with a big roll up door that you can get all your stuff in, right? Man, it is it is nice. <laughs> I've always wanted one of these. I've always yeah. wanted a shop like this, and and uh, you know, I, I hopefully I can uh, have a couple good events and and make a little money this year. I'm, I'm going to do some more things to it. I'm going to add on to it a little bit. This is just a 30 by 40. It's not very big, actually. But, uh, and it, I mean, it's plenty big enough for my boat, but I really want to be able to put my truck and my boat in here uh, to where I don't have to disconnect from it every time. But, yeah, you know, baby steps, man. I'm thankful to have this and, and some property here at the lake. So uh, it, it's a big step for me in the right direction, I guess, of adulthood. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, you know, I've, I've you know, been working so hard at this that, you know, I, I couldn't afford to really rent anything because, uh, you know, it's just expensive. It's money that you can't get back. So I, I, I've been so blessed with, with some really awesome people that I've met along the way that have helped me, you know, with let me stay at their places and stuff, you know. So it's uh, – there's been a lot of pieces to this puzzle for everything to come together. And uh, it's still evolving. It's still shaping. And uh, we're still growing, but um, I have a lot of people that have helped me along the way. And I, I've got to, you know, give a lot of thanks to them. Well, congratulations on that, because there's nothing like having roots, even if you're not there all the time. Hey, by the way, very nice of Major League Fishing to uh, to put that first event on your on your lake. You get to sleep in your own bed, right? Man, yeah, exactly. It, you know, that's that's the reason why I moved to Rayburn, you know, because there's so many events here, you know, and a lot of times they're early in the season. And uh, that's why I moved here right after college. That was the goal. I mean, I want to fish for a living, you know, and, and this was the place to be in Texas as far as tournaments go. It's, it's the it's the Gunnersville of the rest like of Texas. You know what I'm saying? I mean, absolutely. Everybody from, you know, Arkansas, Oklahoma. Texas, which is huge, obviously, Louisiana, even people from Mississippi, everybody comes here to fish tournament, you know, a lot of tournaments here on this lake. And uh, <laughs> There are guys that earn a living and all they do is fish Rayburn, right? Oh, absolutely. The Albert Collins, you know, Derek Mundy, yeah. you know, guys like that, man, those guys are killing it and uh, doing a great job catching the crap out of them, beating the heck out of all these locals. And <laughs> they, uh, They're tough, man. It, 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 these guys around here, They'll take your lunch money, and so if you enter any of these little jackpot tournaments, you better have your tennis shoes tied because they're fixing to catch them, and they're going to knock your shoes off if you ain't catching them too. That sounds like some really good Texas rhetoric right there. That That's good. <laughs> better have your shoes tied. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, are you going to fish any Toyota Series events this year? Um, I mean, you've obviously graduated, but I, I know you like dropping in on those events from time to time. Is, is there going to be room in your schedule for that? I would say that I've graduated, man, because I'm gonna tell you, it's uh, them events are have taught me so much, and they and I continue to learn every time I enter one. And those that competition is tough, you know. You got the best locals, the best regional guys. Those are great tournaments, and uh, I, I definitely um have looked at the schedule. Unfortunately, I can't fish a full division mm. uh because of schedule conflicts. Um, so. I really would like to make the Toyota Series championship again. It's been really good to me over the last several years. And um, I really would like to go back to it. It's on Gunnersville. It's going to be in the fall. I think, I think it's be a really good tournament. Um, but in order for me to do that, I have to make it to the wild card division. So I would have to fish four of them. Mm -hmm. And the ones that are available for me are Dale Hollow, Santee Cooper, wow. the Potomac, and the St. Lawrence River. So, um, uh, I can fit those four into my schedule and still potentially make the Toyota Series championship. Um, that would be the goal at hand in fishing those. Now, I may jump into Dale Hollow or something like that just to fish it because I like Dale Hollow. And if it if I'm in the area, you know, I'm definitely – which yep. I will be. I'm probably going to end up fishing that one, I'll say. And I may go to Santee because I've never been there before and I really want to learn that place. Um, but it just depends on kind of how the season's going, to be honest with you. And, you know, if I go enter Dale Hollow, let's say I have a good event, and I go to Santee, I have a good event there, you know, it kind of makes sense to go on to the Potomac yep. and the St. Lawrence because, you know, that championship's huge. That's, that's one of the biggest tournaments in bass fishing. Um, and for the money, there's not a better event out there that you can pay 
let's just say, see so if it's three events, you know, let's just say they're for second conversation, they're 1500 a tournament. I think they're like 1700, but I'm not really that good at yeah. math. So let's just take 1500, three tournaments. So you're at what? You're at uh, $4,500. Is that right? Yes. I don't know, something like that. Yes. Somewhere around there. Yeah, $4,500 entry fees. That's how much it costs to fish those three tournaments. Now, mm -hmm. you got expenses as well. So let's just say you spend two grand each one of those. You got another six grand. So you're at $10,500. That's how much it's going to cost you to go, let's say, to three of those events. Well, now you're fishing a championship for $235,000. You know, we pay, you know, 40 grand in entry fees to the pro circuit, and we fish for 235000 you know, uh, in our championship. So uh, it's the best tournament. It's the best bang for your buck at any tournament trail out there, any tournament, you know, deal that you can go fish and go make a championship and have a chance of winning a life changing amount of money. So with that being said, I really would like to do that. But, and I love traveling and I like going, you know, as hard as I can and, and, uh, and working hard at it. But I will say that, uh, that St. Lawrence tournament throws me for a loop. And I love the St. Lawrence River. It's always been good to me. And I really want to win there. I'm excited to go back there for the championship this year, the Pro Circuit. Hopefully I'll make that. Um, but that last Toyota Series is on the St. Lawrence River. The week before that, we have our last Bass Pro Tour event. And it is on Malax in, like, northern Minnesota. Yeah, and it's a so drive. I'm going to have to leave the St. Lawrence River, drive all the way to Malax, fish Malax, and then drive all the way back to the St. Lawrence River, which is like 20 something hours, and then drive 20 something hours back to Texas after that. You know, so that's a, that's a big, that's yes. a, that's a big deal there. Uh, but man, you know, it's just, I'm going to play it by ear. You know, yep. if uh, the season's going good, if, I, if I'm, I'm still out there and, and hungry and ready to go to another one. I mean, it's hard not to go to that St. Lawrence River when there's a tournament there because it is such a beautiful place. Yeah. The weather's great. The fishing's great. It's just that place is really near to my heart. So I, I'll probably end up going back. But Last time we talked, you were uh, not sure whether you had qualified for the Major League Fishing uh, Bass Pro Tour. You made it. Congratulations. It's the pinnacle of the sport, in my, in my opinion. Um, talk about the Every Fish Counts uh format how is that going to be for you man I, I i really uh i'm not that worried about it in a sense uh, i feel like that if you just go fishing and uh do your thing like that'll kind of fall and you know uh, it, it'll be okay uh there is some strategy behind it i know that um i'm aware of that i know i mean until i get in there and i start fishing you know we'll see how it goes um uh, we did fish the uh tackle warehouse pro circuit title event two years oh, ago right not well, well i guess it was two years ago on sturgeon bay in that format uh okay. so that was my first experience with the format i enjoyed it uh i thought it was pretty cool to know hey like you know if i'm out and i'm not getting bit and no one else is getting bit to me that was really cool to know that like hey i'm not doing anything wrong they're just not biting or if you know everybody's catching the heck out of them and you're not catching anything you know like you need to make an adjustment so that's just a little bit of a a little bit of insight i guess on kind of the strategy behind that and there's a lot more to it, obviously, that I'm going to have to learn over the next seven events. But um, I think at the end of the day, man, um, it's still fishing. Um, and it's, um, you know, you go out there and you work hard to figure it out and, and you get around some fish. I, I think we'll be fine. Uh, there, you know, little rules and stuff like that I'm going to have to get used to. I'm probably going to have quite a few penalties from boat flipping <laughs> fish. And doing, you know, just not thinking, just in the moment. I don't know. I mean, I, I've been practicing really all fall um whenever i catch a fish i make sure to release it below the gun all like little stupid things like that because I, even like people would think that's dumb to do that while you're practicing but man like in your heat of the moment like you got to get in the routine of doing those things and, and that's just that's a rule it is what it is so i need to follow it and so i'm not stuck with penalties all the time so i've just been trying to get in the habit of doing things like that making sure my fish don't touch the carpet which i've always been um I mean, I'm not like a freak about or anything, but I've just always been very conscious of it. I don't like that from, I don't like my carpet getting dirty, to be honest with you. So I've always kept fish off my deck for the most part anyway. So um, if I, if I could, so yeah, it'll be a, it'll be a transition for sure. But um, I, I think it's going to be fine, man. I'm really excited about the opportunity and, and the level of exposure that the Bass Pro Tour uh, offers 
for the people that have supported me and got me to this point. And that's the most important thing. You know, these these people that have stood behind me, Tiger Creek Lodge and Turner Out Special Forces, Hammer Rods, Gill, all these companies that have stood behind me to get me to this point. Um, I'm really excited to be able to represent them on one of the biggest stages in bass fishing. And, uh, and, and they really offer a lot of promotional opportunities for those companies. So I'm excited about that. Absolutely. We're talking to Dakota Eber. He is the 2021 Bass to Anglers podcast angler of the year. Look at that. Look at that plaque he's got sitting there behind him. That that's awesome, amazing. Dude. I've been having it up on my up on top of my fridge up there. It looks great up there. <laughs> that's great. That's great. Refrigerator I magnet. I, I love it. A, I haven't built like a little trophy. I got some trophies sitting up on top of the my tackle uh, storage thing over there. But uh, I, I need to get like a little shelf or something and put them on there. But I figure I need to get a couple first place trophies to be deserving of having like an actual trophy case. And I have like several of the seconds and thirds and fourths and all that, but I haven't won one yet. So with that being said, uh, I need to win one to be able to deserve a real trophy case. You know, <laughs> there you go. Stay hungry. So what, what does your 2022 sponsor lineup look like? Uh, did you add, I mean, I, I would think that the Bass Pro Tour has got to be very lucrative and give you a, a, a bargaining chip, so to speak, when it comes to talking about support in the upcoming year. Um, what does your 2020 sponsor lineup look like? Man, honestly, it's the same as it was last year. I didn't, uh, didn't lose anything. I didn't gain anything. And it's, um, uh, you know, I think that, man, it's such a tough industry on that side of things. And it's just, it's really kind of diluted. I'm just to be honest with you, just to be completely frank. Um, because there's so many anglers, there's three different tours going now, you know, and really more now you got the pro circuit, you got the Bass Pro Tour, you got the elites, you got hundreds and hundreds of, you know, open anglers and, and you know, then you got the MPFL. Man, it's it's a tough ball game out there, and and I know that, um, you know, I'm not one of the biggest guys on social media and stuff like that. I really I have to put all my effort into catching bass, too well in tournaments. So uh, I think that's holding me back some. But uh, I I do think that if I can go and have some success on the Bass Pro Tour this year, I think that'll be huge for me uh, to really kind of, um, you know, I guess make my way up through the industry. You know, I don't think. Honestly, I didn't get a whole lot of, you know, nobody called was like, hey, man, <laughs> we want you on board. I don't like that. And I'm fine with that. It's fine. I mean, it's it's totally OK. I'm not really in it for that. I, if, if there's companies that want to work with me, then I'm glad to work with them. If a company feels like that I can uh, represent them and represent them well and help them sell products, then I'm glad to do that. But um, I think it's important to just let those things kind of materialize instead of like beating on a bunch of doors, sending a bunch of cold emails. It's just not my not really my style. Um, so I'm glad to, you know, work with the companies that I do because they're, they're awesome. Uh, and I'm looking forward to potentially gaining some new business partners down the road. But for now in 2022, uh, you know, we're all with the same people that have got me here and uh, I'm excited about that. So, so let me, let me ask you about the Bass Pro Tour because this is the first year the Bass Pro Tour has added any new anglers since they started. Uh, they had so the three... they, they added John Cox and um that's and, true and Brian but yeah for the most part yes uh, I mean but this was this was the 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 guys that started there had a, basically a three year grace period mm -hmm. and that is up now uh, I don't think anybody left that didn't that didn't want to leave um how long is your spot set are are do, are you set for a couple of years now or how long does this last. Man, uh, I probably should know that, but I, I, I don't really like. I'd have to look at it. I, I know. I mean, I think that. Well, the top six. I know that off the top of my head, the top sixty-five requalify for next year. Okay, I know that. Um, and then, then below that, there'll be ten guys from the pro circuit this year move up. Right. To the Bass Pro Tour. Now they are doing a double qualification thing to where. Um, I don't know if it messed up. I got somebody calling me. Did it mess up the video? Uh, I just see your name now. I don't see your face anymore. Yeah, I'll, let me decline this. Um, that's my mother. She's going to be mad at me. But <laughs> I'll call her back. Sorry, Mom. Um, so, um, 
10 anglers move up from the Bass Pro Tour to the Pro to the or excuse me from the uh, Pro Circuit to the Bass Pro Tour next year, and it'll be like that from here on out. Now there is double qualifications to where um, there there so if let's just say I'm fishing the Pro Circuit next year, which I am, and I finish in the top 10 in points, well. They're not going to go down the list, so I'm going right. to requalify for the Bass Pro Tour from that um, yeah. from that deal, no matter what I finished in the Bass Pro Tour. So, uh, hypothetically, though, if um, if ten pro circuit anglers that aren't already fishing the Bass Pro Tour qualify, uh, well, they finish in the top ten. They're going to qualify for the Bass Pro Tour. So at that time, ten guys would have to come down from the Bass Pro Tour. Okay. Yeah. Um, which usually you have a couple guys leave or whatever, you know, just from different things and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, they may not actually end up having to cut 10, you know, it just depends. But um, mm-hmm. I know the top 65 requalify uh, straight up and then uh, below that. So that leaves you 15 spots. I think the next five guys are based off of uh, like career average. So, However, that goes, but I mean, obviously, this is my first year on the tour, so I mean, I gotta catch. I mean, that's all. I mean, we're not. We're, yeah. You make sure I'm in that top sixty-five and my stop, my spot secured. That's all we're worried about. As far as the rest of it goes, uh, I, I really haven't paid too much attention to it. I just know I need to be in the top sixty-five. <laughs> well, as you said earlier, it all gets started this week. Uh, the, the Bass Pro Circuit event at Rayburn. Where do you go from Rayburn? Yeah, it, it we come out swinging, man. Uh, so with the pro circuit and the Bass Pro Tour schedule kind of really flowing together, they did Major League Fishing did a great job of kind of orchestrating those two schedules together to allow guys to do what I'm doing, and I think it's an awesome opportunity. Uh, so I have uh, the pro circuit event here, and then I go straight to uh, Lake Darbon in Louisiana. So it's Darbon, Caney, and Bussy throughout the first. That's stage one of the Bass Pro Tour. So I'll leave straight from here go to stage one of the Bass Pro Tour in Louisiana, and then I uh, leave there and go straight to stage two of the Bass Pro Tour at Lake Fork, and then uh, leave straight from there and go straight to stage three of the Bass Pro Tour on Smith Lake, and uh, then we'll leave Smith Lake and go straight to the second Pro Circuit event on Harris Chain in Florida, and that puts us out to March, so, um, you know, mid-March. So we're we're booked up every weekend, uh, every day from here on out till uh till mid-march and then we've got um they've got red crest which i'll be uh working the expo there in in uh tulsa so i'll leave from harris chain go there and uh and then after that we're right back to the grindstone again so it's pretty much you know every weekend from here until mid-may very very cool well dakota we uh you are a you're a favorite of ours. We've enjoyed watching you last year. Um, I can hardly wait to see how you do, uh, you know, on on the, the Bass Pro Tour. And uh, hopefully you're up there in the running for that Angler of the Year, Bass Pro, uh, Bass Tour Anglers podcast, Angler of the Year again. I mean, uh, if you're going to fish as many events as you say you're going to, you might be right there again. So congratulations on that. Thanks for being with us. Yeah, you bet, man. Like, I'm looking forward to it. I, I'm just so thankful for the opportunities that I have. I'm just trying to make the most of them while I can and uh, just keep riding this uh, wave of momentum. And it's, it's just been kind of surreal. And I don't really uh, – I hate to say that, but you kind of take it for granted because you're just working so hard that you don't really realize, you know. And sometimes you sit back and you think, man, that just happened. But uh, I try not to really let that stuff think – you know, just think about it like that, man. I'm just enjoying the moment, living day by day and, uh, you know, and uh, – really trying to do my best but uh yeah i i don't think i'll fish quite as many events next year obviously it depends if i fish the, those uh the the toyota series then yeah but I, i'll probably be well with right with the bass pro tour and the pro circuit that gives me i think uh it's about 16 events 17 events so then you throw in a couple of toyota series and we're back up there at 20 so yeah, yeah maybe so man we'll see <laughs> all right best of luck to you we'll talk to you again soon Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.